You should be doing something you're passionate about. Just drip with passion. Find your passion. What's up, Believe Nation? It's Evan. My one word is believe, and I believe in you. I believe you have an amazing gift inside you that I want to see explode out onto the world. Now, I started the One Rule series because I digest a ton of content in making our top 10 series come together. And the One Rule series takes some of the lessons that come up over and over and over and over again from the top 10s and smushes them into one video. So today, we're going to learn how you can find your passion. Enjoy. I think a lot of people look up to you in terms of a role model for achieving your ambitions. Sure. What is your advice for people watching this going, I want to do that thing. I love the way that you do this. How do I go about doing it? What is your golden rule? I don't know if there's a golden rule. I can tell you this, that I believe anything is possible, right? I live in the world of possibility. And I also believe that anything we can accomplish anything with our two hands and just putting in the work with our two hands. And also, you hear this often, but it's really, really true. You gotta find something, if you love what you do and find and be passionate about what you do and find something that you can be passionate, like it really helps. You know, it gives you that motivation when you wake up in the morning. I think you should be doing something you're passionate about. So the question is always, you know, when I give my younger self advice, you know, uh, would I still go to Stanford? Would I still go to Stanford Law School? Um, possibly, but I think a lot more about why I was doing it. Was it, is it just, uh, you know, and I, I was on this super tracked career yeah. myself. I ended up at a big law firm in New York. Uh, in my eighth grade junior high school yearbook, one of my friends wrote, and I know you're gonna get into Stanford in four years. So I went to Stanford four years later, went to Stanford Law School, ended up at a big law firm in, uh, in New York where on the outside everybody wanted to get in, on the inside everybody wanted to get out. <laughs> um, when I left after uh, seven months and three days, um, <laughs> one, one, of the, one of the people uh, down the hall from me said it was you know, really reassuring to see that it was possible to escape from Alcatraz, which, you know, all, and all you had to do was really just go out the front door. Mm -hmm. but, um, but so much of um, our identity gets wrapped up in the competitions we yeah. win. And, um, that, um, and when, you, when you compete, um, and I think a lot of the credentialing, resume building is this sort of competition. When you compete, you do get better at what you're competing at. And if you take lots of SAT test prep classes, you'll get a better score on the SAT. Um, and when you compete, you get better at uh, beating people on the narrow things you need to beat them on. But, um, but you often, it often comes at this very high price of, of losing sight of what's, uh, what's truly valuable and important and meaningful. Which is? Well, I think passion. There's, well, there's sort of all sorts of other. There are all sorts of things that, mm -hmm. that could be that. But but I think um, I think it often the, the I think it often ends up being uh, something that's a little bit off the beaten path because uh, so I think um, you know there's there's obviously a financial version where you get to be have a monopoly like business. The, there's a the meaningful version I think is always counterfactual where if you weren't doing this uh, would you know it's it's great to be working on problems where if you weren't working on them nobody else would do them. You know, if, if you're working at the fourth online pet food company, the 10th film, film solar panel company, mm -hmm. the 1,000th restaurant in Philadelphia, there's a sense that if you weren't doing it, someone else would. Um, you know, if you're working at, uh, at, at something where it's the only thing of its kind in the world, that's very meaningful. If, if we weren't, if we, and it could be for-profit, non-profit, yeah. all sorts of contexts, if we weren't doing this, this problem would absolutely not be tackled. I think that's the kind of, that, that's, what's, that's what's meaningful. You're not like the regular guy who owns a team who just you know sits on the sideline and his family, can, you be involved, you oh, talk yeah. to the other team. Oh yeah. If you try to get him to sign with you don't sign, you <laughs> call him all kind of punk <laughs> you didn't sign with me. I'm like, Mark Cuban is on oh, the front line with this Oh yeah, yeah, some of them talk about too. I love it. I, yeah, love I just it. didn't care, look, uh, you know, I've been a basketball junkie my entire life since I've been five years old. And um, I just get into it. You know, we all have something, right? Where you're just like passionate, out of control, passionate. right? Just super passionate, right? Um, and ba it's always been basketball for me. I mean, during the game, I'm out of control, right? Those 48 minutes. Right. Any other time, I'm like this. I just feel like advice that I would <laughs> that I would give is just like let yourself be so consumed in in your art or whatever your passion is. It's literally the greatest feeling in the world it's yeah. like love like it's you know to just let yourself be just like swallowed whole by what makes you feel alive and what connects you to 
you know, the universe and, and that inner voice, it, there's nothing more, more beautiful than that. And it's such a, it's such a selfless thing to, to share that, you know, to share that with the world. Cause I think I love that there's, um, and there's this quote, I can't remember it word for word, but, um, this guy says something like share your, share your talent and share your dreams with the world because what the world needs is more people who come alive. Something, yeah. something along yeah, those yeah, lines. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, because, you know, by you just expressing yourself, you kind of ignite, you can, you know, ignite a fire in somebody else some, yeah, to, sure. to we're express all connected themselves in some way, you know, like, and you that would just, yourself that would just make us all like so much happier mm -hmm. as people, you yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah. just do everything, do everything for love and you'll, you'll feel so fulfilled. You know, when you look at what's being done on YouTube and everything else, it's about the love and the passion. I think right you can get away with murder if you've got a, a, like a quirk or if you're kind of single-minded. You know, there's loads of crap stuff that's single-minded and it does well because it's single-minded. But I think, you know, regardless of all the clever or weird bits and pieces about things that work, I think good old-fashioned quality, values and authenticity and passion you know, just drip with passion. I think you can't, you can't mess with that. That's like, that's the treacle, that's the real deal. And I think, I, I think looking back, you know, to be so young and so excited about food was quite rare. Mm -hmm. or, or seemingly it hadn't really been expressed on British TV before. I just love music, you know, and I've always had an appreciation and a, and a love for music, but I didn't know that I wanted to do music until, you know, Guitar Hero. I picked up Guitar Hero and I was, shredding on that expert mode. I had like the elbow when you hit the thing with your elbow. And I felt super cool, so I told my mom, give me a guitar. And that's, you know, from then, that's where I really wanted to make music and keep writing my own songs and express myself. I'm ballin', I'm ballin', I have a song on you. I, I made all my own beats, recorded it on Audacity, the free recording program. Um, I did it all myself. I had to, and Jason, be quiet, bro. I'm trying to record. People in my school loved it. You know what I mean? Because, you know, I was really just trying to do what I wanted to do, and they was all really supportive of that. So I was like, you know, everybody's telling me to do this, being supportive, so I just want to take it to the next level. So listen, this is probably one of the most common rules that we get consistently across successful people in all walks of life. Athletes, entrepreneurs, musicians, inventors. Passion. 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 People who reach the top in whatever they're doing consistently say that you need to follow your passion. And I think the number one reason why people fail in business, in life, is because they're not doing the thing that they're passionate about. Is because they're making too many decisions with the head and not the heart. Where for every major decision that you make in your life, the big ones, you have to make with your heart and not your head, because your head will lead you down the wrong path. Your head only understands the logical world that currently exists, where your heart can help you create something that does not yet exist. And you have the ability, the skills, the talent, the tenacity to be able to create something that nobody else has ever done before. And you need to, unless you want to sit inside a box that somebody else has created for the rest of your life because they're off, creating something new, and you're just taking orders and following rules, unless that's the life that you want, then you're going to have to create something that is unique, that is different, that is you, that reflects who you are as an individual that nobody else can do. You know, I'm doing my thing. Nobody else can do it like me. I'm enjoying what I'm doing, right? You need to find that for yourself as well and stop listening to your head. And that's where it gets scary. Because you get this idea, you get all passion excited about it, and then your head kicks in and says, wow, that's never been done before. That's risky, that's scary. Because it's never been done before, why are we gonna be the ones to do it? And then that's where you stop yourself. And that's where maybe your friends stop you, and your parents stop you, and the people around you stop you, and then the brakes come off on your dreams, and you stop. Where what you need to do is have these things working together, where the idea, the vision, the passion, the excitement comes from your heart, and then you use your head to figure out how to go about doing it. Instead of saying, I can't do it, because it's never been done before, use your head to ask yourself, how can I do it? This big crazy thing that I wanna do, how can I do it? And when you start asking your head those questions, it's gonna start giving you back answers that support your dream.
And so I think most people fail in business, if you look at 80, 90%, whatever the stat is of, of businesses that fail, I think it's because people just didn't do a big reason. The biggest reason is people didn't do something that they were actually super passionate about. They looked at a money-making opportunity. They opened up a magazine of the 100 top opportunities to go and chase ways to make money in 2017, you know, and they just chase those things. I think people make that same mistake in their careers. They go into the jobs that their parents want them to do, or they go into the safe route, and then they never climb up to where they could go. You never reach your potential because you're not doing the thing that you're supposed to be doing because you listen to this, and this will always hold you back. Follow your passion. I believe more in having passion. I think really caring about what you do is way more important than, than having this mental vision of this golden future that you want to reach. Having vision may be what gets you past the problem. My argument has often been that if you like look at the stars all the time, you will stumble over the pothole in the ground because you're not looking where you're walking. Find your passion, follow your dreams, figure out how you can make a contribution with your passion. But I get it, not everybody can immediately know what they're passionate about. There's so many options. There's an infinite, boundless menu of possibilities. Timothy Leary talks about the vertigo of freedom. There's so much to do, I don't know, I'm paralyzed. You're paralyzed, I get it. It's overwhelming, the paralysis of choice. Open up Netflix. How many times do you spend browsing for 20 minutes and then it's like, I don't wanna watch anything. <laughs> no matter what you choose, it's not gonna be the right thing. It's ugh. So, ugh. You have to figure out this, this passion thing from all the possible ways in which you could invest yourself. Stephen Kotler, also from the Flow Genome Project, wrote this article in Forbes that I was like, holy sh**, he deconstructed passion. Here is the formula. Here's how you find your passion. If you don't know it, you make a list of 15 things that you're really curious about, right? Elizabeth Gilbert, who wrote Eat, Pray, Love, often talks about the pressure of knowing your passion, and she says if you don't know your passion, at least chase curiosity, because at least you know things you're curious about, and you can make a list. So Kotler goes on, make a list of 15 things you're curious about. So let's say I'm curious about space. I'm curious about existentialism. I'm curious about the singularity. Like, you make a list, and then you have 15 things. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna try to sort of create a Venn diagram, and you're gonna find out where these things overlap. Where do three to five of those 15 things you're curious about overlap, right? Because now they're spilling into each other. See, anything you're curious about is squirting dopamine. So it's already, there's neurobiology there. Right? But if you have multiple things that you're curious about overlapping, that's a lot of neurobiology, right? Follow the chemical trail. You know, like we are mediated by neurochemistry. Our ecstasies and our sadness is all mediated by neurochemistry. So just chase that dopamine hit, but be smart about it. You know, not the slot machine style dopamine hit, but like here's a lot of things I'm curious about, here's where they overlap. That is the way to your passion. Clear, easy, follow along and you get it. Then he says, now you know your passion or at least the direction of it, find a need in the world that can be served by your passion, right? Because then it's like you have curiosity which leads to passion. The passion now leads to purpose, oh yeah. A reason to get up in the morning. Raison d'etre, a reason for being, a reason for moving, a reason for taking action, a reason that matters, a reason that makes you matter. Curiosity, passion, purpose. And guess what? <laughs> you know what your flow is, so you can also bring insights from that idea, right? So these are the things that give me flow. These are the things I'm curious about. These are where these things I'm curious about overlap. And they overlap in ways that if I go this direction, I can also be in flow when those curiosities overlap. Holy shit, and there's a purpose that I can serve by being in flow, playing with all the things I'm curious about, and serving a need in the world. Oh my God, you figured it out, that's it, done. Go home, bye. <laughs> like, that's the solution. While judging, which factors led you to your decisions? 
It's about your passion. Like it's one thing to get up there and dance well. I wasn't looking for the person that was dancing well because it's world of dance. Everybody's gonna dance well. Everybody on that stage is amazing. So what I was looking for was whatever that step above amazing is. And I feel like that comes from me being able to see the passion of what you're doing. If the piece is sad, I'm supposed to be sad after I watch you do it. If the piece is upbeat and happy, I'm supposed to want to get up and dance too. If you can't make me feel something with what you're doing, you basically failed. Now I've got a special bonus clip from Vera Wang on finding your passion that I think you're really gonna enjoy. But before that, my question of the day is, what is your passion? How did you find it? I would love to hear from you. Please leave it down in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I believe in you. I hope you continue to believe in yourself and whatever your one word is. Much love, I'll see you soon, and enjoy the bonus clip. I was working as a sales girl at Yves Saint Laurent, and in walked Frances Patecky Stein. She was then the fashion director of American Vogue. I sold her a lot of clothes. She said, someday when you finish college, call me and I will give you a job at Vogue. Well, for me, c'était un rêve, quoi. And I came home and I told my mother, this woman's gonna give me a job at Vogue. And my mother started laughing at me. She said, I'm sure she says that to all the young women. And I said, no, I, I think she really thinks that I can come to Vogue and work. I didn't know what an editor did. I think she saw a passion and I think she saw a desire to work. I got totally seduced and from there on in, I fell in love with it and it just became, it became my life. Fashion is not for the faint of heart. Not just figure skating, by the way. And considering those are the two loves of my life, I would say that in order to do both and to suffer, in a way, sometimes the loneliness of that kind of dedication, you have to really be passionate. When you love something, every day goes by in 10 minutes. And for me, it was all about fashion. It really was. It was my way to express myself through dressing women and creating things. And that's a very, very seductive feeling. You know, when you look at the clock and you're a clock watcher and it's nine o'clock and you look again and it's 9.02. And you look again and it's 9.07. Well, when I worked at Vogue, I'd look at 9.02 or 8.02, and I'd look again, it was 10 at night. And I don't even know where my youth or my days or my nights went. Well, you're 15 years. But I was, I was really, really um, very, very happy there. Raise your standard. Apple at the core, its core value is that we believe that people with passion can change the world for the better. Not one drop of my self-worth depends on your acceptance of me. I don't ever give up. I'd have to be dead or completely incapacitated. Hey, Believe Nation, if you want to see my all-time favorite top 10 rules of success, I have a very special secret video for you. These are the individual clips that I have personally learned the most from and applied to my life and my business. Check the link in the description for details.